In the Shookum Hills coal mine, company co-founder Paul is chatting with his son Derek, who realizes he's forgotten his tools and goes back for them. Suddenly a shadow jumps out and drags Derek away. Paul hears his son begging for help and rushes to save him, only to be hit down by the mysterious enemy. A strange noise echoes in the mist as the creature reaches out to stab Paul, then a bleeding Derek is taken away screaming. Many years later, an adventurer called Ariane is looking at a bunch of newspaper clips that talk about the workers in the Shookum Hills mines dying in a huge fire. To this day, the authorities still don't know what happened, and the mining operation was closed after the tragedy. The weirdest part is that Shookum Hills hasn't appeared on maps since the 70s and its population seems to have disappeared. Ariane is gathering as much information as possible about it because she's been hired by a group of scientists to find the mines again. When they're finally ready, the group leaves in Ariane's car and quickly notices their phones have no signal. Eventually they cross a small town and stop at the store for supplies. There are some really creepy things in the shop and Ariane takes the chance to ask the proprietor about the location of Shookum Hills, but the man says that he has never heard of it. When Ariane keeps pressing for information, he tells her to go back to where they came from. Ariane leaves without buying anything, and a local man who overheard the conversation makes a call to report there's trouble coming. As Ariane's group tries to leave town, a car starts following them. Ariane speeds up to try to lose it, quickly making it out of town and into the forest. However the car suddenly comes to a stop, so Ariana goes off the road and hides for a moment to wait until the car is gone. She explains to the scientists that the car had been waiting for them to pass one specific point in the road, so that spot is where they need to go. The group crosses the forest by following that clue, not noticing the sign with a danger warning. The car goes down a narrow dirt road until they find the way blocked by an electrified fence, which means something important is on the other side. Thankfully there's a tree leaning over the fence, so they just have to climb it to reach the other side safely. Afterward the group starts exploring the area, only stopping to take samples. Eventually they decide to set camp by the river to rest for the night. The scientists spend the evening discussing theories about the disappearance of Shookum Hills. Darren thinks it was a sinkhole, but Sean thinks the American government was making its own version of the well to hell, referring to a hole dug by the Russians that went so deep it supposedly broke through hell. He even has a recording of the strange sound they discovered in that hole, which almost sounds like a creature moaning. Sean believes it's the screams of the damned, but Darren says it's just the grinding of tectonic plates. Meanwhile a group of locals led by Dale find out the wires in their electrified gates have been torn from the inside, which a wild animal can't do. They look around the area for clues and one of the men checks another installation up close, only for a mysterious creature to suddenly pull him down and kill him. Moments later, an older Paul shows up and tells the group that he wants the scientists gone immediately. The next day, the team keeps exploring and sees various posts with megaphones, so they assume they're a warning system for gas leaks, although they look quite new. They also find studio foam, which is usually used for soundproofing. Eventually they find a grill on the ground expelling lots of smoke, but when they're about to take some samples, the car from yesterday shows up. The team hides and waits for the car to leave, then Ariane insists on moving faster because the locals obviously know they're here. After lots of walking, they finally make it to Shookum Hills. The buildings are well preserved, but there isn't a single person in sight. They start recording as they enter a random house and notice more smoke, causing them to wonder if the gas from the mines is the reason behind the disappearance of the townspeople. Suddenly Ariane opens a back door in the house and discovers the mining area. The scientists are very happy to have found proof of the story and they rush to a huge hole on the ground that has been covered with electrified grates. After cutting the wires, they start working on removing the grates, ignoring Ariane's warnings about the potential dangers. Then they lower a scanner into the hole, but they don't collect any data until it hits the bottom. It seems the hole has lots of a pure rare metal known as anthracite, but while the scientists celebrate, Terry hears a weird noise that suddenly becomes a screech and hurts his ears. He takes off his headphones and makes everyone hear the noise on the scanner, but suddenly he steps on a rope and is dragged into the hole by a mysterious force. As Terry bleeds and cries for help, Ariane prepares the climbing equipment and goes down the hole with Jamie. They reach the bottom safely and look around, noticing a mysterious shadow moving in the darkness. Ariane is worried about the gas levels, but Jamie refuses to leave Terry. At that moment, Dale arrives with a shotgun in hand and gets furious when he sees they've removed the grates. He immediately starts cutting the ropes, so Sean hits him to knock him out, but one of the ropes still falls. This worries Ariane and Jamie enough to make them climb out, and since they don't have signal to call for help, they have no choice but to leave in Dale's car and send someone to rescue him later. The group drives through the forest, but the car comes to a sudden stop when it gets stuck in a crack on the ground, forcing them to proceed on foot. When night falls, Dale wakes up near the hole and uses his radio to alert his friends about a breach, but at that moment, the mysterious creature kills him too. Dale's call triggers an alarm that rings all over the forest. Ariane's group tries to hurry up, but they start hearing that weird sound again, which is similar to the recording Sean played the other night. They turn off the flashlights as they sneak around so Ariane can use night vision and she finally gets to see the monster, which suddenly attacks the group. They fail to shoot it and start running, but sadly Sean is captured and dragged away. When the creature gets too close to Ariane, 
she hits it and runs faster to join Darren and Jamie, who have found the road and managed to get the attention of a truck driven by Elroy. The trio climbs to the back, where Shelby fires a few more bullets to keep the creature at bay so they can escape. Moments later they make it back to town, where the locals are gathering for this emergency. Shelby takes them to her safe house, where she's gathered all kinds of information about the monster. After Shelby and Elroy furiously scold them for freeing the creature, Paul reveals himself, explaining he left the business life to work on protecting the area from curious tourists that could cause trouble like they just did. At that moment they get a message saying more creatures are showing up, so they must return to the hole and seal it. On their way out, they hear the creatures nearby, so they immediately hide behind a truck. Another radio message tells them to go to another safe house because too many monsters are coming, but the closest house is uphill. Elroy knows he can't run fast, so he volunteers to distract the monsters to give the group a chance to escape. With a Molotov in hand, he rushes out to meet the creatures, and the resulting explosion kills him too. Meanwhile the group makes it to the safe house and tries their best to stay quiet. However there's a monster right outside the window, and when Shelby's radio makes noise, the creature makes a noise to call for backup. Suddenly the creature enters the house, so the group runs into a different room. They throw a plate to distract the monster and run to a room in the back, locking the door behind them. However the monster is strong enough to punch a hole in the door and send Jamie flying through the floor, which breaks the wood and reveals a secret tunnel. The team goes down and starts running, finding that the tunnel takes them to a cave. The monster is getting closer, so Shelby decides to stay to distract it while the others keep going. While the creature chases after Shelby in the opposite direction, the trio finds the exit and breaks down the fence to come out. Then they try to put the fence back up, but at that moment, more monsters show up. Jamie activates a grenade to kill them, however the monsters grab him and during the struggle, he dies in the explosion too. Ariane and Darren have no choice but to keep moving, slowing down when they end up in a very narrow passage. Eventually they reach a huge cavern and Darren can't help stopping for a moment to deal with his exhaustion and grief. He regrets bringing everyone here and admits he didn't do it for science, the truth is that a mining company would pay him lots of money for the anthracite. In return, Ariane admits that during an expedition to the Himalayas, she had to let a client die to save her own life. Since Darren has lost all hope, Ariane decides to continue alone but promises to come back for him. Meanwhile in town, all the locals led by Paul use the megaphones to attract the monsters to the gate and quickly open fire to kill as many as possible. At that moment Ariane returns to the surface and starts following the sound of the shots, only to suddenly hear a monster approaching. She manages to hide in the trash and waits for the monster to leave, but when she comes out, the creature knocks her out from behind. When Ariane wakes up, she finds herself on a raft with a dead Shelby and a monster, she also panics when she realizes her legs are paralyzed. She tries checking the water, only to discover there's a nasty critter there too. Her scream gets the attention of the creature, who puts her to sleep again. Moments later, Ariana wakes up and discovers she's with Darren and Sean. While Darren tries to give her a grenade, Sean says that these creatures are alternative species that colonize like ants. Suddenly two monsters grab Sean and bring him to feed their queen, who is bigger but incapable of moving. While Sean is eaten, Ariane manages to grab the grenade, but the creatures grab her to use her as food too. Luckily Darren has his phone and activates the alarm to get the attention of the monsters, giving Ariane the chance to throw the grenade into the queen's mouth. The queen quickly dies while Ariane and Darren run away with the monsters closely following them. Eventually they find a rope leading to the ground and Ariane quickly climbs up, but Darren is slower. Soon a creature is climbing the rope too so Darren stabs it with a knife, but since more monsters are coming, he decides to cut the rope instead. Darren falls to his death and while the monsters feed on him, Ariane sees the locals arrive. A man almost cuts the rope, but Paul pushes him away and helps her out instead. Then the locals use flamethrowers and rifles to keep all the creatures contained in the hole. Afterward Paul drives Ariane to the gate and tells her about Derek's death. He points out nobody will believe her story and asks her to help, so Ariane agrees to stay and fight. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.